this is so fall. This is so fall. I'm so fall. I even put on this sweater because it's fall, even though it's hot outside today. <laughs> Welcome to or back to my channel. My name is Annie and today I'm going to be talking about 10 books that I can't wait to read for fall. I'm not usually the kind of person that makes a seasonal or even a smaller TBR than the massive one I have in my Goodreads, which is like a thousand books. <laughs> but um, I thought that this video would be a fun way to help me out because I do like to mood read and hopefully it'll help you guys find some good suggestions for books that you want to read in fall. Fall, autumn, autumn, fall, whichever one you want to say. Fall is my favorite season. I love it and I think reading good books that kind of encapsulate the feeling of fall is important because it helps you enjoy fall. So without further ado, let's get into the books. So first up we have The Very Secret Society of Irregular Witches by Sengu Mandana. I hope I said that right. In this we follow Mika Moon who is a witch and an orphan who likes to keep to herself. She has certain rules that she sets for herself and she doesn't like to go outside of them. She thinks that being alone is being safe and she keeps her witch powers very very secret. However, the one freedom that she allows herself is posting videos online where she pretends to be a witch. So I'm not, I'm not sure what that entails. Maybe she's doing like bogus magic or maybe she's just being a witch and thinking that people will think it's fake. But anyway, she does that. One day she receives a note asking her to teach these three young witches how to control their powers. She accepts and she goes there and meets lots of quirky little characters, including a man named Jamie, who is a bit grumpy. He runs the library and he's very protective of the witches. When a threat comes to the house, Mika has to decide what she'll do for her found family. Now, I'm so excited about this. I've heard really good things. I can't believe I haven't read it yet. It was big on TikTok and BookTok. I mean, what am I saying? BookTok and BookTube and I have heard the best things. I love a good like cozy heartwarming read in the fall and I'm really interested in reading more cozy fantasy and I love the fact that the love interest is a librarian because books. I mean wouldn't we all love a guy who loves books? I would. And yeah I just think this seems amazing so hopefully I will be reading it in the fall. Next up we have In the Company of Witches by Orly Wallace. I have heard about this on TikTok and then I saw it in the Barnes & Noble and I gave it a little look, even though I, I didn't get it. I should have gotten it. But I looked at it and it looks really cute. So I really want to read this. For hundreds of years, the Warren family of witches have quietly used their magic to help the citizens of their town flourish. However, then a man dies in the Airbnb that the Warren family runs. Bryn Warren is our main character and she runs this Airbnb with her aunts and one of her aunts is now the prime suspect for this murder. Bryn wants nothing more than to prove her aunt's innocence, but she has a bit of a block on her power. She is a witch of the dead, which means that she can commune with ghosts, and she knows that she could help solve this murder, but she vowed not to use her powers after her husband died two years ago. It's gotten to the point where she doesn't even know if she can anymore. It feels like it's been so long. So she decides to help her aunts anyway, letting them use their magic and her using her d powers of deduction um, to see if she can solve this mystery. And it just sounds so cute and kind of emotional, but the cover, let me look at the cover. Does that not scream fall? Like that's so cute. I don't know. I just heard really good things. So I'm excited. Next we have A Treacherous Curse by Deanna Rayborn. This is book number three in the Veronica Speedwell series. And if you know me, you know I love this series. I've only read the first two books. So I'm looking forward to moving along with it. These are cozy mystery books. So I kind of feel like any of them could suit fall vibes. This series follows Veronica Speedwell, an orphan who grew up in the company of women she calls her aunts. She has a passion for lepidoptery, which is collecting and examining butterflies. When her aunts pass away, she decides she's going to go on a butterfly collecting expedition and gets all ready to leave, but right as she's about to go, someone breaks into her house and she's rescued by a mysterious baron who tells her that her life is in danger and to come with him right then to London. She's like, okay, cool. I had to go to London anyway to secure passage 
for my expedition so she she goes with him but she kind of thinks that the whole your life is in danger thing is a bit dramatic she's like okay like really really i don't think so when they get to london the baron drops her off at his friend stoker's house now stoker is a natural historian and a taxidermist and he is this grumpy guy that is kind of he kind of looks like a pirate can you tell i like stoker anyway uh he drops her off with stoker and he's like i'll come back and i'll tell you everything just like give me a minute and she's like okay cool but then the baron dies and stoker is blamed for his death veronica and stoker decide to team up and prove stoker's innocence while also figuring out who actually murdered the baron this series is so special to me probably will be one of my favorite series of all time that's how i'm feeling about it right now it just has such a special place in my heart and i love the characters so much so to make me feel cozy fall vibes this is perfect. Next up, a book that I own, Five Survive by Holly Jackson. I am really excited about this. Holly Jackson wrote A Good Girl's Guide to Murder and I ate that series up. I ate it up. And this is her, I think her first standalone book and it looks really good. Her main character's name is Red and she's on a road trip for spring break with five of her friends. Her brother, his girlfriend, Red's best friend, another friend from school, and then the friend that Red wishes was more than a friend. I really did that. I really remembered all that. But then their RV breaks down and it they quickly realize that this was not an accident. Someone wanted them to break down and someone wants them dead. They have to either escape or figure out who the target is before dawn. I don't know why it's before dawn, but it is. They have eight hours and they gotta figure it out. And Clearly one of them's gonna die because it's six of them on this trip. Six of them on the trip. And one of them's gonna die. I think this vibe is kind of perfect for fall. Even though it's set on spring break, I love me a good fall thriller. And you know what? I just want to read this. So I'm putting it in fall. So I realize now that it's set in the spring. I'm gonna pretend it's set in the fall. Anyway. Five survive. <laughs> I'm keeping it on this list. Next up, we have Just Another Missing Person by Jillian McAllister. This is Jillian McAllister's new release. She wrote Wrong Place, Wrong Time, which I absolutely loved. I don't usually get that attached to a thriller, but I was really emotionally invested in it. So I'm really excited to see what she's doing next. This book follows 22-year-old Olivia, who's been missing for a day and the clock is ticking. She went down a dead-end alleyway and hasn't come out. They can't find her in there so things are looking suspicious and the detective that's been assigned to her case julia thinks it's just going to be a normal case normal missing person thing nothing weird but then she finds out that the criminal at the heart of this case has a weapon more powerful than a gun more powerful than a knife you know and this weapon is a secret specifically julia's deepest darkest secret and in order to keep her family safe and i assume keep this secret she has to not only not find Olivia, but frame someone else for the crime. Is she gonna do it? What would you do? Who knows? All sorts of interesting questions here. I like the kind of ethical, moral dilemma that this book poses, and I think it'll be perfect for fall. Um, Gillian McAllister is an English author. At least she's from the UK, maybe Scotland. I feel like Wrong Place, Wrong Time did give me fall vibes, and Hopefully this one will as well. And I love a good thriller in the fall. Next up we have Carrie by Stephen King. I really need to read this. I've been wanting to read it for ages now and I haven't and I owned it. And I, I wanted to buy it for ages, then I bought it and I still haven't read it and it's been ages. So yeah, I have to read it. Basically this is about Carrie White who has the gift of telekinesis but her life is Far from perfect, she gets bullied at school, she has a bad relationship with her mother, and when Tommy Ross from her school invites her to prom, she thinks this is like the beginning of her maybe fitting in with her classmates. But things go horribly wrong on prom night, and that's the synopsis of this book. That's what it says on the back, at least. I'm super excited to read this. Obviously, Carrie is a classic for a reason, and I haven't read any of Stephen King yet, so I'm excited. And my nails match it, kind of. Going back to something a little bit more 
wholesome. We have Little Woman by Louisa May Alcott. I got for my birthday this stunning edition of it with Little Men and Joe's Boys in it as well. And I'm so excited. I don't know how I'm gonna get this to the UK with me because it's heavy, heavy. I've read Little Woman many, many times and each time I get something different out of it. And I think this is the perfect book for fall. It's coming of age, it's cozy, and it's a classic. What more could you want? It follows the four March sisters, Meg, the beautiful oldest sister, Joe, the rebellious writer, Beth, the tragically frail angel child, honestly, love her, and Amy, the spoiled and romantic little sister. And it just follows their hijinks, what they get up to, them growing up, their life together, their trials and tribulations, and it is so good. I've never read Little Men or Joe's Boys, so hopefully I'll get to those at some point too. I haven't re reread Little Woman in a while, and I would really like to this fall. Next up, we have Tress of the Emerald Sea by Brandon Sanderson. I got a copy of this for my birthday as well, and I am so excited. I do kind of like the UK covers better, or the one that's like that one, but like the hardcover. But this is also beautiful. Look at that. Like, look, look at that. Anyway, I don't really know what this is about, except that Brandon Sanderson said that he was watching The Princess Bride with his wife and she turned to him and was like, I love this, but I wish Buttercup had more to do. So he wrote this for his wife and I love The Princess Bride. I could watch that movie over and over and over and over again. I didn't like the book, unfortunately, but the movie is great. So this was what he wrote her and I have been so excited to read this and I think it could be good for fall. It seems cozy and fairy tale-y and whimsical. So I'm just gonna read you what's on the dust jacket because I don't really know a synopsis for this. So the only life Tress has known on her island home in an emerald green ocean has been a simple one with the simple pleasures of collecting cups brought by sailors from faraway lands and listening to stories told by her friend Charlie. But when his father takes him on a voyage to find a bride and, dis and disaster strikes, Tress must stow away on a ship and seek the sorceress of the deadly midnight sea. Amid the spore oceans where pirates abound, can Tress leave her simple life behind and make her own place, sailing a sea where a single drop of water can mean instant death. Doesn't that sound great? There's pirates in this. Who knows if this is fall? I just hear cozy and I think fall. So that's what we're going with. And I I cannot wait to read this. Next we have The Last Tale of the Flower Bride by Roshni Chomsky. So this book I have heard a lot of good things about. On Goodreads it says it's gothic and sumptuous, which sounds great for fall. So we'll see. I've also heard it's about female friendship and kind of those catty friendships you can get into in like middle school years that are just super toxic between two girls. Sign me up for reading about that because that's very relatable. <laughs> so the synopsis of, the, of this book is a man who believes in fairy tales marries this beautiful enigmatic woman named Indigo, but she has one rule for him to not pry into her past. However, when her aunt dies, she and her husband go back to her childhood home, which is called the House of Dreams. There her bridegroom begins to learn the house's secrets and delve into his wife's past, especially her friendship with this other girl who we get the perspective of. So we have two perspectives. It's the bridegroom and the friend from childhood. And it says that he will be forced to choose between reality and fantasy, even if it means the destruction of his marriage and maybe his life. So it sounds really good. I saw the Clockwork Readers, um, I think it was the Mid-Year Freakout tag that she did and she was talking about this book and it that sold me. If Clockwork Reader likes it, I, I'm i signing on, you know? So I can't wait to read this one. And finally, we have Juniper and Thorn by Ava Reed. This book is a gothic horror retelling of the Juniper Tree story, which I don't know of. So can't really comment on that, but I love a good fairy tale retelling, especially for fall. I feel like Fall is for, is for spooky, it's for fairy tale, it's for horror, it's for like foresty vibes. And this is giving me foresty vibes, even though I think it's set in a city. So 
who knows anyway moving past that so mar lincoln i think that's how you say her name and her two sisters live with their dad who is a wizard in a city that is transitioning from magic to industry as the land's last true witches the girls take clients giving them old remedies and using kind of their nostalgic charm as a cash grab but they're kept sequestered from the outside world by their overprotective and xenophobic father who doesn't let them out at night they sneak away and go out into the city one night mar lincoln meets this dancer in a ballet and falls head over heels as her nighttime trysts become more and more frequent her father becomes more and more unstable and a sinister threat is lurking in the city filled with old magic mar lincoln I don't know how to say her name. Marlingen, I think, must draw upon her own power to keep her city safe and to find her own place within it. This, I've heard, is amazing. It sounds incredible. I love a coming of age story and hopefully, hopefully fall vibes are there. Hopefully we can find them. But yeah, I think a fairy tale retelling sounds perfect for fall and I like a horror gothic fairy tale especially in autumn. So that is all the books that are on my fall TBR. I hopefully will get to them. I'm gonna try to. Maybe I'll do a vlog where I read some of them because I want to read some good fall books in fall. Hopefully you are as excited about fall as I am and I mean surely it'll be here soon, right? Surely. Thank you for watching. If you like my video, give it a like. Um, and subscribe if you would like to. If you do subscribe, make sure to click the little notification bell so you are notified every time I upload. And that is it. I will see you guys in my next video. Bye.